name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I have some props this morning. The first one is a, a Grace Point ball cap. Grace Point being our camp and retreat center. Uh, and I'm going to put it on here. <laughs> Everybody, thank you. Everybody's going to say, that looks silly. So I'll take it off. Now I don't look silly? Oh, come on. <laughs> How silly can you look? Um, I, I, I'm trying to figure out something to say that would offend everybody at some point. <laughs> I, I thought first about politics, and then I thought about just talk about myself. <laughs> I chose myself. I'm a priest. That's why I got all this junk on. I am a priest. Um, some of this has meaning. Incidentally, this has no meaning whatsoever. This was, this was a poncho that people wore, was just an outer garment. Uh, and then people said, well, it didn't look very good, so they started embroidering stuff on it. And so, particularly in the medieval cathedrals, it was good to have a heavy something on, you know, it was cold. Uh, the other thing I've got on is uh, this white undergarment, uh, which was the, the normal street wear of people in that point in the Roman Empire, kind of like Saudi Arabia today. You know, that's all this is. It has no meaning. And then there's the stole, the thing that goes around your neck. Now, that is what makes me a priest. Uh, not my education. Uh, but the stole, because this was the thing that, that way, way back yonder, a couple of thousand years before Jesus, um, the priests wore. Here's another one, as you can see, you know. It's just, just a scarf. But that's the priestly vestment. If people saw somebody with that on, then they knew that person could offer sacrifice. That's what a priest did. He offered sacrifice. Um, now, you know, there were all kinds of purely superstitious notions back in the early days of Judaism and the early days of most religions that thought that when bad things happened, no matter what they were, they were, they were somehow punishment of bad things because I did something. I sinned badly and therefore this happened to me. Or the whole bunch sinned badly and the volcano went off. And so they got to, to trying to appease God by throwing sacrifices into the volcano. Or by, you know, I guess people did this individually at first, but then they got to where they did it as a community, so they built altars. See, this is an altar. We are still doing something in front of an altar with a priest. Or well, the priest is doing something. Uh, but superstition means that I think I'm in control. And so I do something that I think is going to appease God or whatever and make things better. If I could make God happy or less unhappy, um, Sacrifice on the altar became a way to make up for our misbehavior. My sin caused the storm. I get forgiveness, you know. People took lambs and doves, sacrificed them to the gods. Essentially, this became uh, the job of the priest, though, since people didn't do it individually anymore. So the priest... You know, it's real interesting. Nowadays, if you invent a new app uh, and you get it going, all of a sudden you can monetize it. That's a new word. You, we monetize things on the Internet. Figure out how to make them pay. Priests did the same thing. <laughs> they monetized. 
even by 2000, they pretty much had a monopoly. Uh, if you remember, the one time that Jesus really got upset was at the priests monetizing. Uh, not, only, not only had it become where you brought an unblemished animal, they had it so that you had to get an unblemished animal that was provided by the priest. Couldn't bring your own, you had to pay the priest. And then they went into banking. Woo. You know, it got to where you could go and buy an unblemished animal and give it to the priest for sacrifice. But then they got the bright idea that money from the street was nasty so you had to only use temple money to buy the sacrifice. And that's the money changers. The money changers took your dirty money off the street and made it into temple money so that you could go buy the sacrifice to give to the priest to make things better. After Christ, this all changed. Sacrifice of that kind was totally unnecessary. It was as though Jesus had been the sacrifice for the whole world, for everybody in the world, for all the sins that you're likely to commit. Uh, we didn't need that anymore. Christians saw themselves as the body of Christ. The body of Christ the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. You are the body of Christ. The altar, we still see it as an altar on which sacrifice happens, but it also now is, is a table around which we join today and share the bread and wine because we are the body of Christ. That physical, personal reality that brings the forgiving, the healing, peacemaking Holy Spirit into the world. Jesus transformed the altar from where people make sacrifices for their own personal benefit protection from nature or forgiveness of sins or what, to offering for the whole world. And so now as a priest, I offer you your gifts to transform the world. That's why on the front of your thing it talks about the, uh, we are a living sacrifice. Read the front of your bulletin. It's what we say in the prayer of consecration. Here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. That's what we're doing here. That's why I'm dressed up and looking silly. And so you don't forget that priest <laughs> is offering you on that altar. for the sake of the world. We do this weekly because we are still sinful human beings and we have to be reminded weekly or more often that that's who we are. This body of Christ assembled constantly reminding ourselves that we are offering ourselves. The offertory is a very important part of this service. We, we symbolically give gifts in the plates and then we turn to each other and say, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And that's part of the offertory. And we put all that on the altar and God accepts it, gives it to us in our community, in our communion, and we take it into the world. Well, that's... That's pretty clear. Um, when I was in Mississippi, there was a little Roman Catholic monastery near Greenwood that I would stop in every now and then to see them. Pleasant bunch of guys. And um, that was back in the early 70s. 
when everybody went crazy on posters. You remember that when there were posters about everything? Well, they had one that was wonderful. It was just a bare altar. It said, the problem with living sacrifices is they keep crawling off the altar. <laughs> Amen.